Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at this. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, it's raining. Isn't she pretty? Uh, oh my lord. Even the back of the bloom looks amazing. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Look. So freaking pretty. I'm just gonna rip it out. It's been a hot minute. You know what, this balcony hasn't gotten any less windy. So, yes, it's been a hot minute. Work happened, winter happened, which, uh, like, I just didn't want to go outside. And I just wasn't really tending to my garden much. We're gonna have a look. We're gonna have a little look at what happened and maybe tidy up a few things. This bloomed a couple of days ago. This is the bloom that you saw at the start of the video. It bloomed a couple of days ago and now it's died because these things are very short lived. Luckily, you can see there's like about four other buds that are gonna bloom. So I'm so looking forward to that. I did go to the nursery today and pick up a few things. So maybe we'll, we'll pot up a couple of these things as well. This, what is this? This is a Echeveria Domingo, which was in the $3 bin at Flower Power, which is kind of amazing. Look, it's not in the best condition, but salvageable. I think I also got this Echeveria Chroma, which is the sweetest color. I mean, look at that. Gorge. I have no idea what this is. And it was barely sitting in the soil when I bought it, but I got it because I, I kind of like the weird looking ones. I mean, look at that. It was eight bucks, which is, look, whatever. But it's, it's, look at it. Look at how cute that is. Focus, please. And I got this which is a dry as Aeonium. It's slipping right out of its pot. Do I need another Aeonium? Absolutely not. Did I buy it? Yeah, because it's kind of, will you focus? Because it's kind of a cute color and it's stalky and we all know how much I love a stalky succulent. Maybe I'll pot those up. We'll do a bit of a tidy up. I'll let's let's check in and see what's going on with the garden. Really, it's it's a bit of a mess. I'm not gonna lie, this, this is gonna be quite embarrassing. There's cobwebs everywhere. I've neglected a lot of the garden. I'm gonna chop some blooms as well, just because we know that they're taking a lot of energy from the plants. Yeah, maybe this is gonna be more of a tidy up video. Okay, let's get to it. So these are like two long pots of succulents that I created. And yeah, this so is like full of cobwebs and stuff. But look, they're not looking great. This is looking all a bit dry and there's blooms everywhere as you can kind of see. This was like pecked at by a bird, which was really annoying. Came and destroyed a couple of things. That was the work of a bird as well. This one here, like what the heck? Look at this. Look at that cute little thing that's just decided to survive. Oh my gosh, focus please. Anyway, we'll leave that there and hopefully that'll grow into something. There's like lots of little gaps because again, I just haven't been watering. It's been winter, uh, blah, 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 blah. Maybe I will put the um, chroma in here. Here's an idea. Lots of blooms to chop off. I mean, I like blooms, but they attract aphids and they pull a lot of power from the, um, what do you call it? The flower, <laughs> the, the, the actual plant. So yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna go. Yeah, let's start there. Oh, look, that's cute. I bet that's a bloom and not a pup. Anyway, oh, this one's done. Chop it off. See you later. This one here is a Harmsii Ruby Slippers, Echeveria Harmsii Ruby Slippers. I got this a while ago uh, in the post from Melbourne, and this is the only Harmsii Ruby Slippers that I've been able to find in Australia. Laura Eubanks uses them a lot, and I've like been, I've, I've always wanted like a really big bushy one, but this one hasn't really done much. 
I don't know. I'm just really waiting for it to grow and bush out. So yeah, there's that that we're waiting on. Oh, what's that? Just get rid of some dusty cobwebs. I know spiders are your friend, but um, I'm not a fan of the aesthetic of cobwebs, so they are gonna go. This is just a makeup brush, by the way. So this one over here might very well be an Echeveria Miranda, I think. There's, I don't know what that is. It's like a bloom. That's not quite a bloom. That has a bit of mealy on it, so I'm gonna chop that out. Yeah, get out. Oh my god, what is that? What the heck? Mmm. I think there's a whole lot of mealy in there that I'm just gonna try and get rid of. Uh, in case you're wondering, I am using 100% isopropyl alcohol, which I probably shouldn't be using at full strength, but you know what? I just want to kill these <sighs> little death. I hate mealy. I just, I absolutely hate them. They're just in this little pocket. I'm not applying it to the whole plant and I will wash it down a little bit later. Okay. These are Echeveria elegans, which are like some of the toughest plants in my garden. Honestly, and they multiply like crazy. If you want succulents that bush out, go for elegance. Blooms be gone. This one up here is a painted lady, Echeveria painted lady, which I was hoping was gonna like grow taller and cover this ugly gray thing up, but um, hasn't done that yet. So we'll just wait and see if something happens with the warmer weather. Oh, we've been having some pretty crazy weather here in Sydney at the moment. It's been like cold. It was like cold winter, then really hot for like the start of spring, like obscenely hot, like felt like middle of summer kind of hot. And then now it's cold again. I don't know what's going on. Come on, be gone. Chop, leave. This is also another... God, come on, oh my God. Come on, is it really that hard? This is also another succulent that likes to bush out, uh, Sedeveria Marcus, I think it is, Sedeveria Marcus. They grow a really beautiful pink in the sun. Um, they're a little bit dehydrated at the moment, so yeah. Gorgeous, I love that. I love this little cluster that I've created here. It's really nice. And look at this little crest that's happening right here. And this aloe mountain gem was blooming as well, but um, that is long gone. So this stalk can go bye-bye. Oh, it's a tough one. Let's just see if we can tidy up these dead leaves a little bit. Oh my gosh, these are the prettiest color. It's killing me. So satisfying. Okay, weird. I can't find where my tweezers are at this point in time. I'll have to go looking for those. Admittedly, I haven't been using them for quite a few months because uh, I haven't been doing any garden maintenance in a while. It's looking a little better. Don't pull good leaves, Shy. Oh. Anyway. I'm not entirely too sure what to do with this. Should I trim this back? Just because there's a lot of dead crap everywhere. I'll trim it back. Okay, hang on, hang on. See if we can give it a little bit of a tidy up and then it can give me more new, beautiful, amazing growth with the warm weather. Actually, acetums? Acetums summer growers? I don't even know. What is this? What's going on here? Oh gosh, okay, never mind. This can go. Wow, all right, so I don't know what's going on with these sedums. Dead leaves, just, oh God. Maybe what I can do is like chop all of this off and then place it. Hmm, do I want to place it somewhere else? Do I? Does that look crap? Well, let's just see what happens. I'll just leave it and, and, and we'll see what happens, okay? So I was thinking that the Echeveria chroma could go, you can't really see it, there, which I think will look really nice. Like that. 
this might be the last thing that I do this afternoon because it's getting quite cold and it's getting really dark. So let's just pop this in there and then, yeah. Ugh, honestly, I seem to be missing half of my tools, which is kind of like, what is happening here? I don't know where anything is. I totally did not prepare to be filming. This is so pretty. Look at that. Just look at that. Echeveria chroma. I'm using chopsticks because that's what is available. I want to use this soil. I don't want to dig anything up and replace it. So what I'm going to try and do is just get the root. No, I actually am going to have to. I was way too optimistic about that. But you know what? I can't even find my, I cannot find my spade. I cannot find my small spade. Which is really annoying. Okay, friends, I found one thing, this thing. Let's just try and get some of this stuff out. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, there we go. There, was that so hard? Okay. Okay. Little... Soil's getting all over the flower, but I'm sure with how windy this freaking balcony is, it'll be all kind of like gone in no time. Look at how cute that is. Just don't mind the ugly railing thing at the back. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Oops, that's, yeah, that is quite a bit of soil. Come on. Tap, tap, tap. Let's just see if we can... Ew. Ew! Oh my god. Sorry, I just went a little bit overboard with that one. That looks great. That looks really, really good. Honestly, that's gonna be it for today, because, um... Yeah. I've had enough. Uh, it's cold, and it's getting dark. Uh, so we're gonna continue this tomorrow, or whenever I decide to continue this. Okay. Gosh, I've, I'm still half asleep and I haven't finished my coffee. It's so bright out on the balcony. This is why I don't really film in the mornings. The light is very intense. We're just gonna see what little bits and pieces I can do before I go to work. I think this is really the only way that I can kind of get gardening done with my job and stuff, which means gardening kind of has to happen sort of outside of business hours-ish. So we'll have a look. I kind of put these two boxes here. Firstly, I just wanted to cover up this ugly AC unit, but these actually get the most light. So morning light hits this first thing, and then light stays on it pretty much until very early afternoon, which is really, it's, it gets the most sunlight out of all of my plants. I'm gonna find something to replace that. That's pretty dead. I can't remember what this was. I think it was a, a, a Graptiveria Purple Dreams. I'll find something to replace that. I really cannot get over these Echeveria Hera. They're like the most stunning colour and they've done so well. This is one of the few portalakas that I have left. You may remember from all of the videos I did at the beginning of the year that um, portalakas is one of my favourite plants and the flowers are just beautiful, which is why I like having so many of them in my garden, but they attract so much mealy. It's like mealy all the time, the mealy, and the mealy just keeps coming back. So I am gonna, I don't know, even this one, this one's got like, you can see all the white, little white speckles, like there and there. So I don't know, I might need to get rid of this one too. I'm not too sure. Is this mealy or a perlite? You can see that this one's been like flowering too. Oh gosh, it's perlite. Ow. Um, this one, <laughs> this one's just covered with cobwebs. It is doing pretty well otherwise, except for the two, I don't know what's going on there, but the two, um, plants that I had at the back there, they are, that is like 100% gone. It's really gone. I'm just gonna give these a little dust, because I can, sorry spiders, but your homes for now. I can't see any spiders here, so. Look, I'm just, I'm just gonna get rid of it for now, and then obviously that's a little harder to get rid of, so I'll just have to be super patient with that. Uh, anyway, a Treveria Spicer, which is lovely. Ooh, this cactus here is about to bloom. You can see the little buds there. That's cute. I don't know if you can kind of see 
what is going on here because of the light, but the um, Mardi Gras is actually doing pretty well here. I do have to say, this is gonna just get a little bit more. Sorry. I've forgotten the name of this. It's probably a Pacaberia of some kind, but I am gonna chop off this bloom right here. And I think that like, there's a little Aeonium, what do you call this? Aeonium, um, 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 Medusa. Aeonium Medusa that is, is hiding back there and is being covered up by all of this, like, what do you call it? Aeonium Kiwi Tricolor, which isn't looking too crash hot at the moment. I do have to admit. Thinking I might just like cut that back. That way the Medusa gets just a fraction more sun. All right, let's see if we can do this. I think what I might do is cut this back. I'm gonna cut this back here and then like reset these Aeonium Kiwi a little bit lower. Ugh. I mean this. What this is, it's a freaking feather. Wow. I'm just gonna go inside and give these a wash. Okay, so this is all washed and I think, oh my god, is that mealy? Ugh. Hang on one moment. Okay, alcohol the mealy off and it's stinging my fingers, but what I think I'm gonna do with this is keep this stem and then stick that in the ground and then cut up these and then stick them in the soil as well, if that makes sense. Oh. There's another mealy. What the heck? Can you see that? Little turd. Okay, take three, I think. Let's just see if we can cut that off. Yep. Yep. And then what I'm going to do is cut that there. I wonder if I still have like rooting gel somewhere. That'd be good. And that. Probably about there. This cute little thing, probably about there. Again, I am using a takeaway chopstick because I can't seem to find where any of my tools are. Really, really just not prepared. No. And I just literally. Whoop. I take this, I dip it in just the bottom so it covers, can you see that? Yeah, and I'm just going to shove it in just like, yeah, just like that. Whoops, that's come off. I'm just going to set that on the ground somewhere around here and it's going to do its thing. There we go. That way these stay nice and low to the ground. This Aeonium can come up. As you can see, it's starting to get, without this camera in the way, it will start to get a little bit more sun. How good's that? aloe mountain gem and these are spent blooms actually had really pretty blooms it was kind of like an orange red it was really so vibrant this crested aeonium here is going to need some cleaning up it's got dead leaves everywhere spider webs so i'll probably bring that inside another time and kind of clean that and give that a good kind of clean These have a really strong smell. These had like lavender-like flowers. Very pretty, but um, well, they're all dead now, so yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. 
cute. This one hasn't bloomed yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to chop it off. And now there's more energy going to the actual plant. I mean, the bloom is part of you. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm just going to take off these dead leaves. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do today because the camera is about to run out of battery and um, i got to go to work. <sighs> this is all very bitsy. I don't know what this video is going to be like. It's just all very kind of like short clips put together. Anyway, we'll continue this another day and I will see you another day. Okay. Alright, hi, hi, hi. Okay, um, almost the end of the day. I managed to find all my little tools, which is fabulous. I feel complete, so I can get working again. <sighs> the question is, what am I working on? It's hard not to feel overwhelmed because there's so much to do, but I guess let, let, let's just try baby steps. Just one thing at a time. Yeah. This is completely gone, by the way. I'm just waiting for it to, unless I can... No, that's not ready to go just yet. I'm just going to wait a few more days and then it'll... It should just fall off eventually. Okay, so you can see that there's quite a few things going on here. Firstly, cobwebs. Get out of the way, please. There's also a li like a little bit of mealy here, but I don't know if I love this plant here. One of my first videos was planting this here and I put it here because I wanted that red pop. But it just, whatever I put here just doesn't seem to colour up like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so we're just gonna chop these blooms so we can give the plant the best chance at just doing its thing. Doing the thing that it does best. Oops, took off some leaves there. Yeah. Oh, came right out. I'm just gonna do a little bit of spot treating. This is mm. I I don't know what I'd put here in place of this. I'm not too sure. Should I just I mean all of this kind of stuff isn't looking too crash hot. Um this, uh, I think Pulvinata, Echeveria something, starting with a P. I'm just wondering if I just let that kind of like grow all the way around and then maybe, maybe I can take this out. You know what? I'm just going to do it. Because that's what this video is about. Fixing things. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, maybe I can just pull it out. Oh, that came out quite easily. Wow. All right, gaping big hole, but I'm sure I'll figure out what to do with it. I just don't know yet. I just don't know. Let's chop this. Oops, oops. Oh, God. Hmm. I don't know, what do you think? Should I just let this crusty crest crest thing do its thing? Or what? Um, oh, God, so many leaves, what the heck? Wow. Whoops, all of this crunchy stuff around here. Wow. You see here that the succulent is just a little bit etiolated? These etiolated leaves are just like coming right off. Wow. Also, I don't know what to do with these. These are looking pretty sad. Yeah. It could just be winter and maybe I just need to be patient with them to kind of bounce back from, from the winter. Um, but yeah. Wow. 
Okay, that's really tough. And there's a bloody stalk there. Ah, oh, like five billion years ago. Old bloom stalk. Okay, so I'm hoping that'll fluff right back out again. In the meantime, let's see if we can just tidy. Ooh. Tidy these up a little bit. Get rid of like the stuff that looks crap and yellow. Whoops, just snapped that leaf in half. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Wow, there's so many. Oh, that's just lifting right out. Does this need a full repot? I kind of don't wanna. I cannot be bothered. Wow, okay. Um, oh, I don't want to disturb these bougainvillea roots. That's a thing. Wow, oh my gosh, I'm about to pull out a whole handful of... Oh my god. Yeah, look, I don't know what to do. I'm thinking maybe it just needs a top up. Maybe I can just top up the soil. Okay. This is kind of um, like new-ish, oops. This is kind of new-ish soil where it's got pretty mix. So I still use cactus and succulent mix, like the specific brand, oh my God, what is the name of it? Deb Co. And I'm not sponsored, <laughs> not sponsored. They don't, Deb Co don't know who I am. This is not sponsored at all, but I mix that in because I like, I like that brand. I just mix it in with hummus and gritty mix and zeolite and more perlite just to, you know, give it a little, a little zhuzh or something. I'll decide what to do with this gap in due course. I think, yeah, I just don't know yet. I don't know. I don't know. I'll make a decision about these later. They're supposed to be like really bright red and they're cuttings from my cousin's place and they were like so vibrant red at her place. And again, nothing really colors up. Anyway, that's enough talking. Let's move on to this bougainvillea, which I eventually want to bonsai, but it's really hard to do that because these things are just such bloody slow growers. What I will do is kind of like limit up a little bit. So what you want to get rid of is like, oh, that's not even holding anything in place. Wow. Okay, just get rid of this. Let me, that's not doing anything. What I'm gonna do is actually cut off the branches that are growing into the tree. So when you're kind of like pruning a tree, you wanna get any branches that are kind of like crossing over with each other on the, on the inside. Like you've got your main branches, which are, you know, this branch here. And I've decided to have these like three branches as like the leader branches. So what I'm gonna do is chop off this one. I don't know if you can really see. To chop off this one that's kind of like can you see how that's crossing over and I'm gonna chop off this one here because it's kind of like growing into the other branches oh that came right off without me having to cut it and then this one here I'm gonna try and do it this this way yeah and I'll probably chop off this one because this one's kind of growing at a really funny angle i don't know if you can kind of see that anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna chop off that one oops oh, god all right this one is not looking really great hey so what i'm gonna do is chop back a lot of the um, portalaca. So this is one of the few portalacas that I still have. I've decided to get rid of the ones. This one, for some reason, didn't really get that much mealy bug. This is like one of the first portalacas I ever bought, portalaca sun jewel. And it's got really beautiful pink and yellow flowers. Such a gorgeous little thing. That's already looking so much better, oh my god. These are Echeveria Molasso. I love how stalky they are, but I am gonna cut off this bloom, which seems to be merely, just merely everywhere. There we go. And this, 
I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that just looks really super atrocious. Yeah, I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to brush off all of the cobwebs. Oops. Wow. <gasps> Did that just... Oh my god. No way. Is this dead? Maybe I have to cut this back. Looks okay. I mean, could be worth... I'm just going to cut it back. I'm going to cut it back to a nub. And, 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 yeah, we'll see where... What happens to it. Looks fine, I think. Let's just cut it back. Mmm. Maybe not. I don't know. Oh, whoops. I'm going to chuck that out. I'm going to let this one do its thing and we'll see yeah we'll just see what happens with like this one that's looking pretty good I'm waiting for this to fill out and I really want this to kind of like grow long and then droop over the side So that's like a nub, but that's all that's left of it that looks decent. Okay, I decided to come inside because it's chilly and, um, wow, I look really tired. It's getting really dark outside. It's about, it's almost six o'clock. Cannot wait until daylight savings starts, honestly. Daylight savings is like one of my favorite things ever. I love long days. You just feel like you have so much more time. When I was in Sweden, I was like working in Sweden for about three months and I was there during midsummer. There was this point where like the sun was still shining at 11 o'clock at night, which I know would trip out a lot of people, but I absolutely loved it. I felt like I just had all the time in the world. And nighttime can be like really lovely and beautiful as well, but just there's something really nice about having long extended summer days and I'm really looking forward to when we have summer again. Okay, so I'm gonna try and fix this up too. It is a crested sunburst aeonium and it's pretty spectacular, except it's got a lot of dry leaves and cobwebs at the moment. So we're gonna try and clean this up and we're also gonna pot up some things. We're gonna do a little pot and chat and we'll do a catch up. I suppose I have to get, um, I suppose I have to get a pot and some soil. Gosh, it's like I've forgotten how to do this. I found this cute little thing. Where did I get this from? I think I got this from Flower Power. This was just literally sitting in soil like that. And I bought it because I thought it was like the prettiest color. And it is, look at that purple. Wow, mate, I am tired. Maybe I should just pot this up and keep it stressed so it stays that color. Like never water it again. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna need some um, fly screen thingy for the bottom of the pot. It's like I'm not ready for this at all. All right, I think we're, I think we're okay. So what's been going on? I got really, really busy. Oh, that's not pretty. Let's move all of that. Okay, then we can bring this table. Oh, shall we do this by candlelight? All right, what am I, what am I, what am I trying to explore here? Okay, what's been going on? Well, I got very busy with work. Very, very busy. I do theatre in another life, which is supposedly like my first passion, but there are days when I just want to run screaming from a life in the arts. Are these candles in the way? Maybe. Yeah, there we go. So I was doing a show, directing a show. Directing is what I do. I perform, I direct, and that just kind of like took over my life 
for a little while, which is fine because that's just what happens in theater. I'm hoping that in the future, I'll be able to find a little bit more balance with this kind of stuff because I don't, you know, burnout is a real thing in, in the arts industry, in the entertainment industry. And I, I just, I, I prefer it to not take over my life. I'd really like to find a way that there, there can be balance. When you're working on a production, it is just, there's so many things that you have to manage. And it's not just logistical stuff, but you're working with people. There's just a lot of people and emotions. And because you are working so closely with you know, you're working with people who are working so closely with their emotions on stage. Everyone's kind of like working closely with their emotions. Theatre, the art sector, it's a very emotionally charged space. So when you're just trying to manage a whole group of people that are, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot mentally, it's a lot physically, and it, it's a lot emotionally. There were months on end where or I, I actually just didn't have capacity for anything else. I didn't have capacity for... YouTube didn't have like, it lit I was waking up and it would be the first thing that I worked on. I'd open my computer, get started working on, you know, things to do with the show and with the production and then it would be the last thing that I would, I would do before going to bed. Anyway, this one, really, really nice. All right, what's next? And you know what? It was also just getting really cold and I, I, I didn't want to be outside, although I was, you know, there was quite a bit happening with, a, with the plants indoors. And in fact, what I'll do after all of this is put up my Alocasia Mello. Mello? Milo? I've heard both pronunciations, but who knows which one is right. I've actually got two of them and I'm going to combine them. I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. Let's focus on this Aeonium something. <sighs> Is that gonna focus? Yeah, anyway. It's not like the best looking Aeonium, but I'd really like to pot it up because I love how stalky it is. Love a stalky succulent. And I've actually got a few more Aeoniums coming in the post. I've got two Aeonium Medusas and one Pink Witch. And, and I'd like to experiment with chopping them, beheading them. When you behead a, yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what people call call it, like when you behead the succulents, you remove kind of like the top parts of the, um, like the top of the succulent and then it grows more babies. It's a way of propagating. This cactus and succulent mix, soil, is very, very chunky. Which I don't know is the wisest thing because we're about to enter El Nino. La Ni El, El Nino? La Nina El Nino, yeah. And the reason why I converted to a really chunky mix was because I was losing all of my freaking plants outside during La Nina and the soil wasn't draining fast enough. The soil wasn't drying up quickly. And now I've converted to a very airy chunky mix, which means that I'm gonna have to water like a fair bit. I can already feel it like, and it's only September. The plants at the moment are drying up really, really quickly. I think I'd rather water more than have the soil holds moisture. Does that make sense? Because I was just, I, I lost so many plants in 2022. And that was just like the year of rain in Sydney. Look at this, this is barely any roots. I'm gonna have to freaking water this like crazy. Look at that. Nothing. was I talking about before? Oh yeah, the production. So the production happened. It was a success. It was really lovely. The performers that I was working with were all really grateful for the experience. And so I'm, I'm really, I'm actually super chuffed with how that all went. But yeah, if I can just have it not take over my life, that would be amazing. Okay, that's pretty good. Meow. If I tip it over any further, uh, all the substrate is gonna spill out. Yeah. So this is an Echeveria Hera. Wow, that's freaking destroyed. Check out the skirt of dry leaves on this Hera. Now I love Echeveria Hera. You can still see that there's a little purple bit of hope there. So I actually am gonna try and save it. There is a little bit of mealy. Let's remove the, the, the dry leaves first and then we'll, we'll let's just take it from there wow wow oh mate so many dry leaves oh my 
god, that looks terrible. Is it even worth saving? Like, okay, you know what? I am gonna save this. I'm also just gonna see what I can do with some of these leaves if they're gonna propagate or whatever. No idea, they're not the plump juicy kind, so who knows how this is all going to unravel. This is, that's a terrible, yeah, that's terrible. You know what, I am going to pot it up. Get a little terracotta pot. Oh wow, I may need more soil, maybe. Wow, I did not look after these plants over the winter. Echeveria hera, I find clusters really well. I'm hoping that this, now that I've removed some leaves, I'm hoping that this will actually grow some babies. I have just enough soil. Yes, just enough. This honestly is like one of the most beautiful colors. I love Echeveria Heras. When they stress up like real and get really, really stressed there, the color is divine. Now, there is a little bit of mealy, so I will, I am just gonna treat that. Okay, that one is done as well. Look. Not the most beautiful thing that I've ever filmed, but I've, I've, I'm very hopeful. I'm really, really hopeful about this. And lastly, <laughs> we're just gonna try and tidy this up a little bit. Just gonna brush. Wow. I don't know if you can see this here, but there's a, a ton of air roots. Aeoniums really don't like the summer sun, so the when it got really hot here, and this is kind of this Aeonium crest sits on a really, um, on one of the higher shelves in the garden. So when the sun hit it, it really wasn't happy. Okay, just getting rid of most of the cobwebs. Now these can be pretty hard to get rid of all in one go. So I am probably just gonna try and be diligent with the sweeping of the cobwebs. You really have to exercise patience with this because um, there's a lot. There's a lot of little leaves around the crest that are just so dry. I'll tell you what though, it's really therapeutic. Oh my Lord, what is that? Are these baby spiders or are these bugs? Let's see if I can get that with my phone. What are these? Oh, they're baby spiders! God damn it. Really? You gotta find a different home. Wow. Christ almighty, somebody laid some eggs. All right, well, I'm just working around it for now and then I'll figure out what I, what I wanna do. Wow, there's the mother spider. Shh. Can you see it? It's crawling away. It's crawling away. Can you eat my mealy, please? Please, can you eat the mealy? Yeah. All right, you know what? I'm gonna leave, try and leave the spiders alone because they deserve a life. I think this is just gonna be an ongoing process for the next little while. Although it is looking a whole lot better than what it used to. I think we're kind of done, at least for now. I think that looks so much better. So, there you go. I might end this video here. Oh no, I promised that I would like pot up this allocation mellow as well. Ugh, all right. Okay, let's pot this up. Not a succulent, but I have been wanting an alocasia mellow for a really long time. It's like a reptile and a plant mated. It's the texture is just so interesting and delightful to touch. Like I like plants that are kind of like tactile experiences as well as visual ones. I mean, the succulents, you can't really kind of, the cacti you definitely cannot touch. And the succulents, you probably shouldn't be handling them either, especially if they've got like the, the farina. But house plants, like this alocasia black velvet, I absolutely love. And I love alocasias. I've just figured out the substrate that they're, I think, 
they are really happy with. I'm gonna put two of these. So this one I got from Facebook Marketplace for like $8. Look at that leaf. It's just so delightful. And this one I got on the weekend from an actual nursery where I was just shocked by the price. As in, it was pretty cheap. And there is a new leaf coming up, if you can see that. How sweet, how precious. And I love this pot. This, this color green, I think is one of my favorite greens. Okay, so the cactus and succulent mix can kind of get out of the way. And now I can have indoor mix, which is, um, let's just see if I can show you. So this is a mix of pine bark, cocoa, pine bark, orchid bark, cocoa chips, cocoa peat, perlite, um, 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 pumice, and charcoal. I think that's it. Just gonna take my usual substrate and fill it with um, more, more of this cocoa peat. So the cocoa peat is gonna like help retain moisture and I know that alocasias appreciate a little bit more moisture. Just gonna add some cocoa peat. Fly screen, crisscross pattern, some of this, very good, yes, yeah, so I'm going to combine both of these in. Wow, very perlite -y. wow, okay, so that's going to go there, I've been wanting this plant for freaking ages, so I just, I was so happy when I saw a really cheap one, because it was expensive, it was really expensive for a while. Oh my God, this is like, okay. I think I may need some water for this. Hold on. Look at this. This is, um, this is just all, I, I, I don't know what this is, but I feel like I'm gonna tear at the roots if I try and break it apart. So I'm just gonna run it under some water uh, and hopefully that'll soften all of this. Okay. That didn't take too long at all. That's so much better. Now, the reason why I'm combining two is because alocasias don't really um, produce many leaves. Like I'm actually quite surprised that there's four leaves on this. One, two, three, four. Unless it's like an alocasia, like my regal shields over there is like doing spectacularly. I know that there's a few different plants combined into that one pot. My black velvet only has three leaves coming out of it. And my alocasia scalprum currently only has three leaves and one of them isn't, the newest leaf is not doing so well. And I think that's because I went a week or a couple of weeks where I was only watering it once a week. And I think it needs to be like, they, they really like moisture and this apartment can get very, very dry. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna combine two plants so it can like look really full and lush, which is like my fave kind of indoor plant situation. And hopefully, <laughs> It will survive. I'm hoping, I'm praying. There we go. A perfect alocasia Milo, Melo, Milo, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna end the video there. Uh, lots more to be done in the garden. It's all a little bit overwhelming at the moment. And I'm getting some shelves from dad. Dad's gonna build me some shelves just so that we can elevate and get most of the pots on the floor. Cause I can't, I can't deal with like 5 billion pots. Like it makes it impossible to clean the balcony. I can't do it, I can't do it. So dad's gonna build us some shelves, aren't you dad? If you're watching, please build me some shelves. If you want more gardening updates, like, subscribe, all of those things, and I will see you in the next video.